This is Marty Wilson speaking. It's about 2.15 on the afternoon of September 13th, and I'm sitting in the home of Linda and Peter Sam, and I'm sitting, the address here is 2193 Route 314. And uh, we're here to talk about Sterling Strauss, or Peter is a, a, an artist, so Peter, why don't we start by talking about you a little bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, what kind of art do you do? Uh, well, some of it surrounds you. There are paintings of people and wildlife and and landscape um, drawn from my experience. And um, I think Sterling, just throwing him in at the top of this thing here, uh, so much an encourager of art is based on your experience, not not what some people did in France a hundred years ago or anything like that, but your own life and that accords very much with my desires. Um, I came here fresh out of my art training 50 years ago, next year, <coughs> 1963, and um, as a young person, not sure that this was going to make any sense because my parents had always well, encouraging me in general had discouraged me from seeking a career in art because of the obvious financial drawbacks to that in our present world. Um, but I was going to do it anyway. And unlike my parents, Sterling, one of the first people I met here at a courthouse show that we used to have, uh, was extremely encouraging and continued to encourage me right up to the time he died, and in fact, still encourages me. He How said, so? How, how well, it? he said a couple things that I can't forget about my work. One was, uh, he looked at it and he said, he said, he doesn't even have to sign them. You know it's his work. And <laughs> that I take to be a compliment, not a <laughs> lack of one. Because uh, bad art tends to look like other bad art, kind of, but good art is good art. So. Uh, secondly, he said he's like a, a big league pitcher. He puts everything just where he wants it. And a composition matters greatly to me in art. I think that you spend some time on any site, it reveals its inherent structure to you. <laughs> and I try to express that in the, the paintings I do. Uh, I didn't want what I said before to sound like bragging. I know how falls short. How far from You're telling us what Sterling said about you, right? So yeah. It's important stuff. Yeah. But uh, uh, but the, the very fact, you know, uh, <clears throat> my, I mean, my parents were right on a practical level. <clears throat> and after I'd met Sterling, we went back to New York for a couple of years, and I worked in a hospital and at nights and painted during the day. and. Uh, it was still touch and go about whether we can do this, but uh, ultimately we moved out here, <clears throat> partially built the house we're sitting in, uh, heated with wood, grew f vegetables in the garden, and Linda, who had been trained as a teacher, wanted to, that opportunity, and so mm -hmm. she became the primary breadwinner, and I became the primary bread eater, I guess. <laughs> And, uh, Helped a great deal with the three kids. Yeah, so we raised three children and now have four grandchildren living nearby. And uh, it's been a, an idyllic life. Nancy Hebert, who was along with Sterling, a great encourager of young artists, um, <coughs> described one of my exhibits. She said, uh, he paints, I forget exactly, I don't have this quite in my mind, but an ideal world, but not a not a romanticized world. It just happens to be the world where he lives, and we've had a very nice life. Can, can we back up? You said you came here in 53 years ago, or? 50 years ago, 50 in years 1963. Ago. Where, where did you study? Boston University. And where are you from? I was born in Vermont and have always spent time there and grew up my school years in Yonkers, New York, going to Vermont to work or play in the summertime to so play when I was young, work when I got older. So what brought you to the Poconos? Linda. She had roots here. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Yeah, my grandfather uh, had uh, 
basically developed a what he called a gentleman farm. He always had somebody else do the farming, but and it, just up Hunter Farm Road, it was William T. Hunter. So it was Hunter <coughs> Farm, <laughs> still there, um, although it's not farmed anymore. But but it was so, and he built three, had three, well, two houses first, and then they bought a third one so that he would see his grandchildren. And, okay. And so. We came here all the mm. sum, all those early. I came here mm. from very early years, all summers. The dream of our generation <clears throat> was you find the old place in the country which you buy for a few hundred dollars and fix it up. Well, we pursued that dream. We drove around in Vermont and rural Massachusetts, uh, and even New Jersey. And, yeah, rural New Jersey. But uh, yeah. but all those places had already been discovered and bought and fixed up. But this house was falling down. The and it, just stopped right here at the and street, it, it so belonged, it belonged to uh, Linda's family, and they sold it to us for the price that we had been hoping to find out in the real world. <laughs> <laughs> and we did the fixing up. <laughs> well, we had somebody lift it up, lift it up, and put build a real foundation underneath it. It was up on brick pillars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just as a little. But a house thing. becomes a place to live and uh, <clears throat> grow your vegetables and chop your wood becomes a foundation in itself for a kind of life an artist has to lead. I mean, this is not Venice in 1500s or sometime when artists lived very high on a hog. Uh, and living in New York, making $80 a week in those days, of course, the rents weren't like they are now, but uh, but every penny we had went was gone by the end of the month uh, just to stay stay alive and uh, <clears throat> this gave us some breathing room out here <clears throat> as well. So as well. You, you moved here, if I, if I hear you, heard you correctly, you moved here, is that when you met Sterling the first time you were yeah. here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then just you went, you went, went yeah, back we went York. back to New York. Uh, oh, for a short while. We, we moved, came here in the fall of 63. I met Sterling, we used to have these shows in the courthouse square put on by the Pocono Art Group. and. Uh, shows. Unlike the present administration of the Arts Council, they didn't charge us anything for participating. <laughs> um, but so that's where I met Sterling, and uh, and as I said, he was very encouraging. As was Nancy, who was part of that. Uh, and uh, if it's anybody from me, I'll call him back later. Okay. okay. Uh, <clears throat> and they invited me. Then we went back to New York. In '64, but they invited me uh, to take part in a show at the uh, uh, at the Jewish synagogue down here. I, I'm sorry, I can't remember its name right now. But on Fifth Street. On Fifth yeah. Street, yeah. yeah. And um, and that was at a time when I was still wondering, is this making any sense what I'm doing? And and that was a real boost for me, and I met there also Sally Farabee, who was a great supporter of the arts, not an artist herself, uh, and she bought one of my paintings. But that very first fall, 63, that I went down to Princess. hang my paintings in the Courthouse Square, which would be my first exhibit, uh, I could hardly sleep the night before. I was so worried I was going to sell all my paintings and I wouldn't have any anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> Prince, Princess um, but uh, then we came back in 1966. And do you remember when he first, did you walk up to him or did he walk up to you or do you remember that? Oh, I'm sure he walked up to me. He was very effusive and I was not. <laughs> Come on, Princess, uh, over here. He was Sterling and Nancy, Phyllis Rubin. And a couple of others uh, we'll take were kind of considered, and I think probably considered themselves, the avant-garde of artists here. Uh, Nancy used to call the non-avant-garde the trembling deer school of painting. Uh, you know, too many barns and too many of this and the other thing. Now, I personally think it all depends on how you paint it. We had a wonderful artist here who just died a few years ago, Phoebe Conrad. Mm -hmm. who painted a lot of barns, but it almost, or maybe every one of those paintings was beautiful and, mm -hmm. and reflected her individual, no generic barns in there, you know. But uh, 
They were real ones. But they, were. <laughs> they saw something in my work which was not abstract or anything, but that uh, made them feel that I wasn't of the trembling deer <laughs> mentality. I planted plenty of deer, but none of them are trembling. <laughs> Ten, fifteen. Yeah, easy. So f you came back then as a result of that show. Uh, well, as a result of of um, the encouragement to continue working as an artist and then finding a place to live that mm -hmm. we could afford. That's that's really what brought us here. Mm -hmm. I've talked to other people that said that one one of the characteristics of Sterling is that he was very supportive and very encouraging for artists, and that yes. you're saying yeah. the same thing. Yeah. 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 Did you uh, get a chance to go to his house very often? Uh, perhaps uh, once or twice a year during the many years that we knew each other. I guess it's been described to me as a place where there are pictures everywhere, stacks of paintings. <laughs> apparently it was very prolific, right? It's like the caves of Lazo. <laughs> every or the Egyptian tombs, every inch of space covered with paintings. And not and this is so characteristic of him. And not all his paintings. Uh, the paintings of other artists that he was encouraging. There were three or two especially older artists, older than him, that were primitive, uh, who he was a great encourager of and, and responsible for them achieving some real success. That's Justin McCarthy and uh, Jack Savitsky. <clears throat> there was another artist who had encouraged, of the same type, who had encouraged Sterling earlier, who he referred to as Papa Berlioz. I don't know Berlioz's first name, but I think he has some reputation in art history. Mm -hmm. uh, Uh, we exchanged paintings on one occasion, I think. Uh, I <clears throat> really, I had started a painting in, in the in the year uh, just before he died. Um, before I knew that he was that sick, he, I had started a painting that I wanted to do of Sterling standing in the street at the East Stroudsburg Railroad Station, painting the railroad station with the train in the background and Sterling and his easel in the foreground. And uh, uh, and I got a chance to show it to him after I had learned that he was sick. He called me and others to, to say goodbye, but I had to go down there and not just say goodbye on the telephone. Yeah. And showed him what I was doing. It was it was just about done, I guess. And the first thing he did was to turn it upside down. He said, "This this is a way to check the composition to see if it hangs together." Turn the painting upside yeah. down. Yeah. So all the paint rushed to his head, of course, by doing that. <laughs> so he knew he was dying. Yeah, 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 no question about it. He called to say goodbye. <laughs> How long after your visit? <sighs> Month or two, I guess. Was it a whole month? I yeah, I, I was having a, an exhibit at the college that summer, coincidentally, and when I knew what was happening, I dedicated the exhibit to Sterling. And I, I guess I actually put the last strokes of paint on that painting of him mm -hmm. to have it in there at the last minute part of the show. Yeah. Where is that painting now? Uh, the attorney Dan Higgins bought it. Okay. Yeah. Because he likes. As I was looking to see if I had a picture of it, but I couldn't come up with one to show you. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Mm. Yeah. Well, if you find one, let me know. He sent yeah. me an email. Yeah. So, uh, how, how much did you interact with Sterling? I mean, you come back as a young man and you're getting your artistic mm -hmm. career started. and Well, in those days, the, the 70s essentially we were talking about, um, we had a lot of group events for the artists in the Poconos. Uh, there was an annual Wyckoff show which ran the whole gamut from rank amateur to season pro uh, but was a very nice way of of bringing the artistic community together and 
bringing them together not only with each other but with the community. Mm -hmm. uh, a few years back, uh, Stroudsmore seemed to be recreating some of that experience, but I don't think that's taking place anymore now. Right now, wasn't that an arts council thing? I, You're talking about the big show up at the yeah yeah. I didn't think it was. I'm not sure. About well, that. They, somehow they got Stroudsmore to, <clears throat> to do it. Yeah, but yeah. In any case. Um, then we had these these outdoor shows. We had indoor show. Ed Treby. It was a Treby uh, place. Yeah. When he built his new warehouse, he wanted to have a show. He called Art and Artichokes, <laughs> and we were all there. Of course, down the aisles where they store food, paintings are kind of hard to see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was a little dark in there, yeah. but yeah. but still. But Justin McCarthy was out there on the loading dock just. With a zillion paintings lined up and making a zillion more while he <laughs> while the show was going on, uh, but it was a, yeah, they were, they were yeah, fun. It was they a, fun. There was a famous yeah. Japanese artist Hokusai, I guess, who said, "Just describe me as a an old man crazy about painting." And Justin was kind of like that. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm like that myself now. Somebody described me a, uh, like an art group that met once a week or something and Sterling was, but did you participate in that? No, that was before my time. Um, the people I mentioned, Sterling and Phyllis and and Nancy and some others, uh, apparently they did get together regularly. They believed they had a model they worked from sometimes. They had a weekly page in the Pocono Record devoted to the arts. Uh, the record used to run articles of criticism or analysis of various of the arts, including music as well as visual arts. Um, but they got so much flack from people, parents of school children whose uh, performances weren't appreciated to the parental <laughs> satisfaction that they made a decision, and I don't know if they revisited it ever, but they don't seem to. Uh, they made a decision not to critique local work. Of course, hmm. they have critiques of national movies and stuff like that, but that's different. And they used to critique art shows in yeah. the area. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't remember that. Do you remember who wrote them? I don't know, except I wrote one the first year I was here, full-time, 1966. Um, and that, that got a lot of attention, too. That got a lot of artists interesting interested in getting in touch with me you know and uh, uh, but it was just that there were these regular events my kids can tell you they were bored out of their tears because <laughs> you go when they were closing Wyckoff used to have what they called an annex on the other Wyckoff was the big department store yeah yeah sure and then they had the Sears building they built behind there yeah. and then on that same side of Quaker Alley as the Sears building, there was another store they called the Annex. And then as they were uh, restructuring their operation, they decided to close that, but they, uh, they decided to close it in style by having a, a, a bunch of artists come, oh, yeah. what they called a paint-in, <laughs> and we spent the day painting and trying to sell pictures and and boring our children to death. <laughs> I had to sit around while we were doing it. Is that it. the building that Earthlight, remember Earthlight, the store Earthlight? Yeah, I think yeah, the building I think think could it was could very well be. I think yeah. it did become yeah. Earthlight, yeah. 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 So how would you characterize Sterling Strauss or in the art community? I mean, it sounds to me like he was a big encourager of young artists, yeah. but there's was a, he an inspirer? Or yeah, how? well there's a, there's a uh, an award that I'm sure you're aware of, and because it's given out at the jazz festival every year, mm -hmm. the Sterling Strasser Award, mm -hmm. and he was the first recipient in 1993. And it is not; it's for two things. One is uh, your own work, but also encouragement of other people's work, essentially. And they gave and, one. And yeah, I got one. It's yeah. over there on the on the bookcase I got 1995 <laughs> and I I have no 
no metal I'm prouder to own than that yeah. particular plaque. Oh, you got the Strauss? Or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, because yeah. you worked with, with Arts on the Mountain. Where, where no, it was before that? Arts. Well, I guess Arts on the Mountain was going. Yeah. Yeah. Same. It's on the it's on the bookshelf, the toy bookshelf over there. Oh, oh, oh. Where the kids are. Oh, okay. Um. But. Um, yeah, because we started. But this nobody. Yeah. Nobody. Trying to get Peter down oh, into yeah, this, sure. to this, this thing. Oh, you know, I was probably there the day they gave you this because I went to every single one of these uh -huh. things. Because, you know, it's right down the street from my house. And, yeah. mm. Unless I was at the Duto, of course, doing something <laughs> up there. <Yeah. laughs> uh, artists, I think, in general, do try to encourage other artists if they're not in competition with them anyway. And Nancy Hebert was a great encourager of young artists too, but I don't think anybody could ever match Sterling in, no, was in that just, regard. It was just so equitable. And, um, <clears throat> but another whole aspect of it is the, is the first thing, is your own work. That is, uh, his own work was so prolific and energetic and uh, and beautiful in its own unconventional way uh, that encouragement from Sterling was a meaningful thing. You know? mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> somebody could say, I don't know anything about art, but I like your art. You might not take that as the greatest compliment, but having Sterling on your side meant a lot. Mm -hmm. Actually, I was going to ask you, how, how would you... You know, as an artist, how how do you talk about his work? I mean, what is unique? What is it about his work? <clears throat> the uh, I dug out some, as I said, some old uh, clippings and things I had, and scrapbooks, which we can look at if if you want, or copy them on my copy machine. But um, when he died, I think it was the record described him as an impressionist, but that's not really. Um, I would say if you want to give him a label from art history, an expressionist would probably be clear. Uh, somebody who modifies reality in painting it. Um, and of course we all do that, but but that's just, for some of us, that's just where we fall short. For, for the true expressionist, it's deliberately part of what they're doing. Uh, his his works are infused with energy. Mm -hmm. When when uh, we first talked about having this interview, it was at this uh, huge retrospective of his work, and to to walk down a hallway and see all those vases of flowers, for example, yeah. you yeah. can just feel uh, what is it? Dylan Thomas who said the force that through the green fuse drives the flower. You can feel that happening, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, he gave me a, uh, Linda, he gave Linda and me, as we're described to both of us, a uh, print of one of his vases, which uh, I hung in a place where I see it every time I pay a visit to a certain room in the house. <laughs> <On> the <bathroom>. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, every time I look at it, and I've had it for years, I see something I didn't see before. Mm -hmm. uh, I look at my own paintings, and I, they look the way they did yesterday, but there's just all that energy that transcends the physical fact of the painting somehow. I don't know quite how to do it. Then there's another aspect of it that I think those of us who subscribe to the same feeling that your art is based on your life. Uh, many of us, I think, are frustrated by the reality of you can only do so much in a, in a day or in a lifetime. Uh, but Sterling, with his energy and fluent style, was really able to do the equivalent of a sort of a daily journal of, of life. Uh, quite late in his life he got a kitten and he made a whole series of paintings he just called Old Man, Young Cat. 
<laughs> and uh, he he also he was uh, he included himself in his paintings, uh, kind of like Alfred Hitchcock walking into his movies or something. But uh, and yet there was nothing of the self promoter about about Sterling. I, um, I'm sure you've all encountered self-promoters in your life, and they're so obvious and depressing, kind of. Yes, they are. <laughs> but Sterling, although he included himself, uh, was talking about life, and and the promoting he did, which we've already talked about, is of others. Uh, <clears throat> we had... Uh, I, I talked about those days in the 70s and artists got together and did this and that and the other thing and uh, that began to fade and for in Sterling's case he said well I have these people that come from the south I think it was North Carolina and they come up a couple times a year and, and just take a whole bunch of my paintings and sell them and uh, and I don't have the time or energy or maybe it's partly a matter of a contract with them that to go being part of these group things anymore so so uh, somewhere in the 80s that particular spirit that reigned from the time I first came uh, changed to uh, things happening differently uh, uh, not necessarily badly just differently uh, a group called 80 West started which was intellectually you might say the successor to the group that Sterling and Nancy had had earlier earlier on of people who consider themselves serious artists including me uh, <coughs> new forces came to town Ed Lopez wonderful artist mm -hmm. Penny Ross who came the same time I did in 66 uh, his energy and fluent style was really able to do the equivalent of a sort of a daily journal of, of life. Uh, quite late in his life he got a kitten and he made a whole series of paintings he just called Old Man Young Cat. <laughs> and uh, he, he also he was um, he included himself in his paintings, uh, kind of like Alfred Hitchcock walking into his movies or something. But uh, and yet there was nothing of the self-promoter about about Sterling. I, um, I'm sure you've all encountered self-promoters in your life, and they're so obvious and depressing, kind of. Yes, they are. <laughs> But Sterling, although he included himself, uh, was talking about life and and the promoting he did, which we've already talked about, is of others. Uh, <clears throat> we had, uh, I, I talked about those days in the 70s and artists got together and did this and that and the other thing and uh, that began to fade. And for in Sterling's case, he said, "Well, I have these people that come from the South. I think it was North Carolina, and they come up a couple times a year and, and just take a whole bunch of my paintings and sell them. And uh, and I don't have the time or energy, or maybe it's partly a matter of a contract with them that to go being part of these group things anymore. So, so uh, somewhere in the '80s that." particular spirit that reigned from the time I first came uh, changed to uh, things happening differently uh, uh, not necessarily badly just differently uh, a group called 80 West started which was intellectually you might say the successor to the group that Sterling and Nancy had had earlier, earlier on of People who consider themselves serious artists, including me, 
<clears throat> new forces came to town. Ed Lopez, wonderful artist. Mm -hmm. Penny Ross, who came the same time I did in 66. Uh, uh, more avenues opened up. The Duto was one. Uh, in 88, our Arts on the Mountain that is just about to start its 25th year uh, began up in Mount Pocono. Um, so it wasn't the same, all focused on Stroudsburg. Oh yeah. Kind when of we first arrived, everything part. was. <clears throat> it was and, like and twice and as far to go to have to drive up to Mount Pocono as from Mount Pocono to Strasbourg. <laughs> Obviously, it's way too far for us to meet anybody. I mean, everything had to happen in Strasbourg, <laughs> which was quite annoying. Uh, for the <laughs> and and a lot of other artists made the same decision that Linda and I had. So, that is, oh yeah. hey. I can live a lot cheaper here than I can live out, live in New York City or Philadelphia. And so all of a sudden the arts community was not five people that knew each other, but uh, yeah, a couple, two, three hundred, you know. And yeah. So it's a different world. Yeah. So th that change in the spirit you were talking about, you were talking about this in the scene, the art scene, not so much Sterling himself. The last time I think that we had a strong feeling of the way it used to be was uh, Nancy Hebert died and um, she had not left any instructions for a memorial service but some of the artists those of us who had been around for a long time and and the uh, especially a group of young women artists that she had encouraged a lot, uh, decided we'd put on an event and... Uh, oh, in Nancy's honor. Yeah. So we put on a show in, in Nancy's honor and yeah. and said a lot of things, nice things that she deserved to hear. <laughs> and... Uh, where was that? Where, where did it it was that? Uh, It was the old plumbing supply place on yeah. It was on Phillips Street or something? Yeah. No, 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 no it's on, on, on um, uh, Thomas Street. Or, Tom, or between Thomas and Scott. Something like that. And it's 8th, is there an 8th Street? It's, it's, it was a block yeah, up eighth. from 9th Street. Yeah, you know, that's when you were talking about the, 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 the sweater. And you, you had some... No, that was the Bixler Gallery. That's different. It was, oh, it was different to yeah, the Bixler? Yeah, yeah. Okay, but yeah. it was right around there. Bixler Gallery is on Main Street. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, the thought there was, I thought there was, was one that was on 8th Street and there was something or other, so there was a big... It was on, it was not on Main Street. No, 8th. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I said, it was 8th and across street, Phillips Street or... No, it wasn't one as far else. back as... Well. About down a block from Phillips. Yeah, or yeah. anyway, yeah. somewhere. Yeah, I know where you mean. It's big room, it had, it had lots of room after room. Yeah, room after room, I remember that show. <laughs> and there were a lot of people. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I lost somewhere there. Um, oh, but when Sterling died, and Dorothy, his wife, was still alive, <coughs> there were strict instructions that, and Dorothy wanted them abided by, that there would be no memorial service at all. Th these are from Sterling himself? Yeah. From Sterling? And it was very frustrating for all of us. Oh. So in a sense, although it never said out loud until maybe this minute, Nancy's memorial service was also for Sterling hmm. that uh, because we hadn't been allowed to do something for him and of course the respect of the family comes first but his at the Nancy thing yeah Sterling's granddaughter came and spoke to me oh, yeah, yeah. and perhaps when I spoke I had said something about Sterling I forget uh, and she was grateful that that we had had this event and she had wished <coughs> this is a my recollection, I, if this is going into the record and I'm blah, 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 I, I'm not absolutely sure of this, but I, I know she spoke to me and I know she was grateful. And I think perhaps she would have liked to have had, had, had a memorial service for her grandfather, but I'm not absolutely sure of that. Yeah. This, this might be an odd question. I, I, I was recently in Europe and I saw a lot of, uh, not Picasso, I saw some Picassos, but uh, 
a Van Gogh's, you know, and everybody knows Van Gogh's turbulent personality, yeah. his struggle with his art, you know. Yeah. And yeah. It, is that the way it is for people like you and Sterling? Is do you do you struggle with your art? Um, I struggle. <laughs> I have poor Bill Robinson, a lawyer in town, he commissioned me. I hate to say this in 1988 to paint a picture <clears throat> of his father, himself, and his son with their three great Red Sox heroes, three different generations, Jimmy Fox, Teddy Williams, and Yaz. And I've had that painting 90% finished <laughs> for years, and I can't get the last part done. This is the 100th anniversary of Fenway Park, so I'm hoping it will be done this year. <laughs> but um, What is it? You get down there and you stand in front of it and you look at it? and No, it's a big painting and it's not taken from, it's not standing on a hill in a landscape. So I, like I set it aside, I figure, well, I'll get it done in the fall because then I'll be working indoors. And by that time, there's wood to chop and leaves to rake and other unfinished paintings to finish, which do get finished. And But this painting remains a struggle. So for me, a struggle. Sterling, I'm not conscious of a struggle with Sterling. He seemed to let it flow, as I have said already. Well, I've heard him described as he would come home from work at night, because apparently yeah. he had a day job, and he, yeah. would do, he, he would produce a painting. Worked during the night, yeah. He worked, he worked at yeah. Patterson Kelly, wasn't he? Uh, no, one of those places. Boiler, the boiler, boiler, yeah. boiler, boiler works. Right. Yeah. So well, he wasn't working, <coughs> he wasn't doing heavy physical. Work. No, he was in management. In management, okay. But that, <coughs> and then he'd come home and, yeah, he'd come home and, and work. You know, several, apparently, you know, like until two in the morning or something like that, or, you know, huh. work late. Boy, I don't know. Well, I've taken up a lot of your time. Is, uh, is there anything else that we should be asking about? Is, what else? Well, quick, quick, show the, the get, get, get mm. the, uh, get the, uh, the, 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 I don't know if you have a lot. Do you have a lot of newspaper clippings about it? Well, I have access to them, but I don't oh. have them myself. You you have a scrapbook? Yeah. But I mean, it's 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 a family scrap. Well, yeah. five or six family. Do you want to just? I'm not good for cat, getting up those stairs, Peter. No, no, no. Right no. So, but well, could, okay. I, uh, could I impose upon you maybe if I, to well, we'd make copies somehow? Of this I have a copy right here. Mm -hmm. Copy machine right here. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So quick. Yeah, well, why don't you come and see what you want here? Okay, well, before we go up, though, be, yeah. you know, because I'll turn this off. Is, yeah. there, is there anything else about Sterling that you want to talk about? <clears throat> anything I should have asked you about him? I mean, you said a lot of interesting things. But. Um, we have a new minister at our church, or priest. And we've had a couple of funerals. We had a nice wedding for our granddaughter, too, so it's not all funerals. but. Uh, Father Bob's take is to talk about somebody now up in heaven having more time to do the kind of thing they always want to do. Well, I'm dubious that there are easels in heaven and all that. <laughs> but if there's consciousness that survives our life here, and if, if uh, Sterling somehow becomes conscious of this interview, I just would like to reiterate that uh, Next to Linda, everything that has made me, encouraged me, and kept me going as an artist, I owe to Sterling, and I really appreciate that. Neat. Were you going to say something, Linda? Oh, no, just neat. <laughs> and the only other question I have is whether these young people have anything they want to ask. Do you have any questions? Mm, no, you did a, a very interesting. Thank you for your story. You're now I can follow okay. up to that. Okay. <laughs> well, well, then I'm going to turn this off, but thanks very much. Okay. Sure, you're and, welcome. Uh, and I'd like to see the stuff that you have upstairs. Sure. Okay.